you're looking at right here is a two inch thick bone in ribeye steak picked up at a lo at the local grocery store uh, I'll just be seasoning this up with some oil uh, that's um, some olive oil um, and some salt and pepper now I'm using kosher salt I just put a couple pinches not so much for myself and a couple pinches of uh, fresh ground pepper on the steak just rub it all over and go ahead and repeat on the other side here's my stoke drum grill and I, it's been preheating uh, while I've been uh, prepping my steak for about 30-40 minutes now and it's uh, getting a high heat because I'm using the charcoal um, container that's provided by the stoke in the center um, to, as a concentrated heat source I flipped it upside down and uh, used that funnel funnel shape uh, to create a concentrated heat for the steak for a good sear on the steak and um, I've been heating a cast iron skillet on that on the hot coals um, for uh, after I sear the steak I'll be using that still skillet so here's this the ribeye on the grill I'll be uh, cooking these uh, one minute on each side I'll be flipping after each minute. I'll be flipping it four times. Um, after four minutes, I'll be putting it on the cast iron skillet and let it cook for uh, additional eight to twelve minutes, um, depending on um, how you like your steak, the doneness of your steak. Um, if you like it nice, medium rare. Um, try seven to eight minutes um, after you uh, sear the steak and then um, you should get a nice uh, bloody steak um, since this whole uh, steak is about two pound almost two pounds uh, I'll be sharing this with my wife um, and she doesn't like it so bloody so I'll be uh, cooking these this steak to about a medium uh, I usually uh, enjoy my steaks medium rare but uh, I'll have to wait another day for uh, a nice medium rare steak so uh, as you can see that heat from the charcoal is hot and you're getting lots of flames because uh, the ribeye has a lot of fat in it burning off and going into the charcoals creating the flame but it creates a nice crust on the on the steak you can see how hot how red those coals are and here we go another flip this is the second flip so uh, this is the third time and I did a do a quarter turn after that flip to get a nice uh, cross marks on on the steak with that sear as you can see on that that top part of um, the steak a nice sear and the next uh, flip will be the last flip and then after that I will be putting it on the cast iron skillet so let that go for a whole minute Watch the. I use my cell phone on me to watch the time. Um, minute goes really fast when you're cooking at a high heat. But uh, and this video is in uh, real time, not fast forwarding or anything, uh, or slow mowing it. So uh, there we go. Here we go. Another flip and check out those nice cross marks on the steak. And then once you put it onto the cast iron skillet, it's been nice and hot. The cast iron skillet's probably 500, 600 degrees, um, and you'll you'll get a nice uh, crust, uh, more crust on the steak, uh, and you'll still have those uh, the grill marks on on, on the steak um, after you transfer it there when you're fin for the finished product. So you get a nice uh, crusty 
crusty street steak and um, that that's part of one of my favorite parts of the steak the the outside crust <clears throat> you can see all that smoke and fire going up on the steak so that's about it for uh, the searing almost done here we go nice cross marks on there sticking it on the cast iron skillet and I'll be uh, closing the lid and letting it go for I'll check it out after seven minutes to see how, how uh, done it is now after seven minutes here's the steak got some oils rising to the top and some of those uh, juices rising to the top of the steak nice shiny steak right there and you got a bunch of those oils the drippings on the pan now I didn't uh, oiled up the pan or anything before um, pan it was a nice uh, dry pan because it was on the heat and now it's full of meat juices so uh, the steak is kind of soft look at all that charring on, or that crust on that um, the outer layer of the steak uh, nice crunchiness on there so uh, with that feel I uh, think I'll let it go a couple more minutes uh, since my wife is eating this and uh, give it a nice crust on the other side too for for just that little much uh, time in that indirect heat so here it is uh, I let it go another two minutes and I'll be taking the steak off uh, the heat now and I'll be letting it rest uh, for about 10 minutes on on the chopping board before I slice into the to this nice juicy two inch ribeye steak all right steaks inside on the plate and I will be tanning it with uh, some aluminum foil and let that rest for nice like I said 10 minutes Right, 10 minutes up my my stomach's been growling steaks ready got some juices uh, on the plate now from the steak ready to slice it up on the chopping board let's slice it up nice uh, pink color on that ribeye um, something my wife will eat she won't have a problem eating it Maybe not so much towards the bone, but uh, the, um, the front portion should be good for her. And don't waste that bone. You got lots of flavor on that bone, so don't just chuck it in the trash can. All right, all done slicing it up. And I'll uh, take a try out of my steak right now. Take a couple nibbles from that meat. Look at that color. Just right, just right for this size of steak. Nice juicy steak, good stuff. There's the end, a little uh, less pink, more brownish, more done, but uh, not chewy, not chewy at all. Very good, this is one of the best steaks I've made so far, I've made a I've cooked a lot of steaks in my days and uh, I think this is one of the better methods of uh, cooking um, steaks. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Bye guys.